Welcome to Small and Supercharged Podmas, a series of chatty podcasts that were first broadcast as lives in the Small and Supercharged Facebook group on the run-up to Christmas. Each short podcast features a member of the Mastermind group talking all about what they have got going on this Christmas. Listen, enjoy, screenshot, share to stories and share your support of these amazing small businesses. And equally, if you want to catch up with some lives, we have got them running all throughout December over in the free Small and Supercharged Facebook group. Just search Small and Supercharged and you will find the Burgundy group. I hope you love them. Thank you so much for joining me. And we're going to be joined by the fabulous Jade Stock today. So Jade is, has got two businesses, Out and About Poultry, and she has also, oh, I think she's joining, she's also Mortimer Rose Wealth Management. So I will get Jade added to the stream. Hello. Hello. Well, let's get cracking. Jade wears two hats incredibly well. So Jade, tell us all about you and your businesses. Okay, I don't even really quite know where to start. So um, let's let's talk turkey. It's Christmas. Yeah, for sure. So I started uh, my business out and about poultry back in 2012, just after, well, just before I had my first child, as you do. So I was 36 weeks pregnant and I took delivery of my first 10 turkeys. Bear in mind that I'd done, done the whole move from Essex to Herefordshire, started, you know, a little bit of a small holding, wanted to do something. So and I had never done anything like this before. So uh, the concept of, of what I was going to have to do, especially the end part of it, was a bit like, okay, yeah, I haven't thought this through. But um, yes, so turkeys arrived, babies arrived, baby arrived, and we had to um, obviously juggle the, the, the two for a while. And then, yeah, at the end, we, uh, I got together a group of my new friends in the area and we dressed these turkeys where... Bear in mind, I've never done it before. It was an interesting day. <laughs> Did you find these friends just so they could help you dress these turkeys? Like, it's fine, you can say. It's a while ago now. No, no, not at all. Um, they were actually, a lot of them were my antenatal friends. And a bit more into this than I was, probably, and had done it before. So I think they came really just to laugh at me and the face that I made the first time that I had to put my hand inside a turkey. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll fast forward it on now. This is our 10th year of rearing. We've grown in size. We've got around 200 turkeys and 50 geese on the, well, I say on the ground, they're now in the fridge. But we've done around 250 birds. And everything that we do is done by hand. So we're plucked wow. by hand. They're dressed by hand. It's all kind of a part of, of what we do and um, the uniqueness of our turkeys. They're all bronze turkeys, so they're the, the black feathered turkeys. And everything that we do is, is all about high welfare. So they're completely free range. They're out from morning until night. They've got a big barn to roam around in. Obviously, the last 10 days of their life, we've had to adhere to um, these restrictions that I think many of you are probably having to do with your chickens and, and home birds at the moment to avoid the, the avian influenza, which we could talk about that in a bit, has is is been a huge issue and it's becoming an even bigger issue. Um, oh, right. Yeah, and so, you know, things for us that have changed with the business is that we post all over the country, birds have gone all over the place, um, we supply some restaurants, we supply some local butchers, and I think more, more than anything, I kind of feel like I'm known online now as the turkey lady. You are the turkey lady. Now, I have <laughs> questions about turkeys. So I've got many questions. You know what I'm like. I was like, what do you, what's this, Jade? Um, so what is a bronze turkey? Why is a Because you get different sorts, don't you? What is a bronze turkey? Well, it's just, I suppose it's an old, it's an old fashioned breed of turkey. Um, it actually nearly died out. And it was Paul Kelly from Kelly Bronze Turkeys that stopped its extinction effectively. But it is, it's, it's a more traditional turkey um, and it benefits well from being slower grown. Now, when you say slower grown, how, if you go to a supermarket and buy turkey, how long has that turkey like lived? Eight to 12 weeks. So 22 weeks is sort of maturity. Mine are generally 26 weeks. So they've lived a full life to full maturity, um, which means they've done all the things that they should be doing as a bird that would come natural to them. 
And obviously we know what free range is versus like battery if we're talking about chickens because you know, that's just horrible pictures you see. But what is, with turkeys, how are they, again, I'm not, I'm not having a go at supermarkets at all because you know, we all buy depending on our budgets, et cetera, et cetera. And I know obviously there are welfare standards, however they're raised. So you nailed it there, totally. So we all have different budgets of what we buy out. So mine are far, far more expensive than you would possibly find on the shelves in Morrison's. But what I will say for anything that's produced in Britain, those welfare standards are exceptionally high, um, whether it's a farm turkey or a free range turkey. So what's the difference in how they live? Obviously they've got a longer life if they're the kind of free rangers that you get from farms, but how does it work in their kind of management? So I suppose in a way it's easy for me because they're out. I get up and the first job of the day is to let the turkeys out and they then tend to spread themselves far and wide, be that in my neighbour's garden, be that in the, uh, the stream that runs through our fields. Yep. Yeah. Whoever thought a turkey might swim, uh, be that in hedges, or be that definitely just wandering up the road. So they've had a very free range life, these turkeys, and uh, most of my day or my evenings have been spent with neighbours going, Jade, we've got one of your turkeys here. But, um, the upside to that is they've had plenty of freedom and they've had plenty of space to roam, plenty of things to keep them interested, plenty of dust to bath things so they do love getting them in a big pile of dust. And they range sort of grassy meadows and through our orchard. So they've had loads of like bugs and nettles and all kinds of things they love, plus loads of windfalls, so apples and plums off the trees. And with um, other turkeys that are you maybe buy from a supermarket, do they spend most of their life inside? It will really depend on the price point and, and what the label says. So if they're free range, they will have had to have had access to the outside and, and be in the fields and the paddocks. So if they're saying they're free range, you know, they will have had a life very similar to mine. If they don't say free range, then they will have been barn reared in the sheds. But actually, turkeys are incredibly inquisitive birds, and those birds will have had to have little enrichment. So I think we keep them occupied within the sheds so that they don't hurt each other and get bored. And so that actually they, you know, they do have a nice life and they do, you know, be able to display some of the characteristics that they wouldn't normally display in the wild. And is this stuff like I'm sure I've seen pictures before of like you know, straw bales and things like that for them to kind of peck at and jump on and that sort of thing? Yeah, so they love that. So they like height, so they like to get up and roost. So that's one thing. They like uh, vegetables and things to be strung up, things to peck, things to sort of um, get attack. Chili corn, so the colour red. So all of our feeders and drinkers are red because that colour draws turkeys in. So it means that they will associate that colour with food or, or water. I'll drink. Oh, wow. um, so, but it also means that you can't put anything red in the shed. So, for instance, one year I tried to put um, some bands around the turkey's legs so I could see which strain they were, and stupidly used a red one, which meant they were all pecking at it because they were. It was red. They were really intrigued by that colour. So, oh, wow. um, it, it, it's a way of you know making sure that the turkeys can easily find food and water, but also you have to be careful. So that does mean if you have a turkey that maybe cut itself in the field and it's got some blood and um, you do have to take that away from the others because they will peck it i didn't know that yeah that's really interesting i hadn't even thought yeah. about colors they're quite intelligent birds definitely so in terms of where your turkeys are now have they all moved on yes so their country travels have all come to an end and they are now currently dry aging in my fridges for the next sort of two, uh, week. We're a bit, normally we would dry age for sort of 10 to 14 days, but as, as some of you may have been following, we are currently in a uh, coronavirus. I'm comparing avian influenza to coronavirus now. We are currently in avian, in avian influenza surveillance zone. So that means we have fallen within 10 kilometers of a farm that has got a confirmed case of avian influenza. Right. Oh, okay. Um, add that to the fact that the area that we are sighted in, there are something like three million chickens. 
Oh the my God. The radius of where we are. So we are, Herefordshire is a, a huge producer of both chickens and the eggs that go on to hatch to be the chickens that go into the chicken sheds as well as eggs. So there's a lot of chickens, very, very close to us, which has sent all the health agencies absolutely crazy with how to how to deal with us and what we do. So long story short, uh, the team at the NFU and myself have battled through to get us a license to be able to slaughter and then sell on our turkeys, which is something we wouldn't normally do at this point in the year, but it just because of the bird flu outbreak. Did we have bird flu last year as well? Every year, it's getting worse and worse. So this year is probably the worst year on record. And that's really concerning because actually there's nothing we can do about it. It comes from wild birds and those wild birds are migrating across the country at the moment. And we can't stop that. And that's why we're, all these birds are in what we call flock down. So they are all locked into their um, sheds at the moment to try and prevent them picking up the infection from wild birds. If a bird does get avian flu, are they incredibly ill or what's the what's the kind of repercussions of that? Because you said about being in this zone, how does that all work? Yeah, so if they do get it, they are, it's, it's awful. Um, they are trying to, they're just, it is horrible to watch because it kind of shuts down their nervous system. So you'll see them turning around in circles and shaking and actually the, the end effect is they will die but they will oh, die horribly nice death. So it's, it's quite clear if you've got it. And obviously if you have got it, the most important thing you do is actually report it in so it can be dealt with effectively because those birds, because it's highly pathogenic, it, it's, just, it's just spreading and it needs to be dealt with effectively in the correct manner. So it is important that it's, it's reported in, um, but it's not very nice for the birds and it's untreatable. Right, so you can't even... I mean, I wouldn't necessarily vaccinate, but you can't even do anything to prevent it. No, there is literally nothing we can do. And if one of your birds in the shed gets it, the whole flock have got to go. Wow, okay, gosh. Obviously horrible for the birds that get it, but from a commercial point of view, if you've been raising these turkeys for 26 weeks and then they all have to go, they can't be consumed, I guess? So um, it's done. It's all done through through DEFRA. Effectively, they would come in and they would have to cull all the birds on site, and they would have to take them away and have to dispose of them. And that would be our business in one sitting gone. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. So it is it's really serious and it's really scary. And other than maintaining good biosecurity and good, you know, good, um, you know, health hygiene practices with the birds and doing everything we've asked to. There's literally nothing else we can do. And I feel like it's Russian roulette. Yeah. No, because as you say, if uh, if it's spread by wild birds and your birds just hang out and feels having a lovely life, which is what we as the kind of British public are, are wanting more of. We want our meat and our uh, that, that we eat to have had a better quality of life. But yeah. as you say, you, gosh, I you can't really, you can't you win. Can't, you can't, no, you can't. Um, you can't legislate for it that makes sense there's nothing you can do other than follow the the preventative measures but i think what is going to become more and more for people especially free range producers is that they are going to have to have a plan b of what happens if lockdown comes earlier so okay we only had to put ours in for 10 days but they didn't love those 10 days they weren't the best 10 days of those birds lives because i can't tell them why they're now stuck inside 24 hours a day when they're used to being out in the field so yeah. I think there's going to need to be like a plan b almost of like in the event of lockdown happening again this is how i'm going to keep my birds and you know this is how that you know this, this is how i'm going to give them the freedom without giving them the freedom outside yeah crikey so you have now got 200 turkeys and have you done the geese as well yeah so you've got all those birds in your fridge. God, what, that must be one hell of a fridge. I've got two, but they're very large, massive walk-in fridges. And all the birds are hung in rows and all labelled up. So our job now is to do what we call turkey gender and match people up with all their different weights, which is always really stressful and makes me and my husband realise that we don't really work that well together because there's a lot of shouting. 
or no I don't know me on that at all yeah, no. yeah. It's, it's not our favorite but uh it's fine so yeah we'll match everybody up with their turkeys now so actually when it comes to the final bit where we take the uh the insides out and we box them all up for people's dinners um we will know exactly which bird is going to which person so it cuts down on the administration for us so you've also hand plucked 250 birds yes how long does it take to pluck a bird um me 10 minutes but some of the others a bit a bit longer i mean i've been at it for 10 years now so it doesn't take long it's just it's hard graft on the hands it really is like i i can't feel my fingers today and oh at God. this point in the year i have to sleep with ice pack bandaged on to try and take some of the swelling down because they're so sore oh my god jade literally i ruin my birds with blood sweat and a hell of a lot of tears <laughs> oh my god. i don't suppose so if you're doing it by hand like you can wear gloves and whatever it's still the actual action of the the grabbing it's, and the pulling isn't it yeah it's it's like a pincer grip so you just you lose the ability to feel the the ends of your fingers people don't know the dedication between behind these any farmer actually but you know i think that we kind of we just don't see it do we there are you know there are automatic automatic ways of plucking but ours are a very traditional traditional way of preparing turkey ultimately you reflect that in price because actually i have teams of, of ladies that come in um, and they are all ladies, actually. Um, I have a couple of guys that come and help out, mainly on the sort of slaughtering side of things. Um, but yeah, I've got quite a nice team that come in year after year. It's a bit of a family occasion now. I've got a little sort of family group to come. And it's lovely, but it is absolutely relentless, sort of eight, nine hours a day for two days, quite a rate. Too right. Now, obviously, this year we've heard loads about uh, shortages in turkeys, shortages in... Actually, what haven't we heard shortages in? Let's be honest. It's, it is true. There is a turkey shortage, OK? And, and we, can't, we can't get away with that. So it goes back to um, the whole rearing process. So we all uh, order our turkeys in in March, and that then gives us time to hatch the eggs, which are then delivered... As, as day old poults between June and July, depending on how many weeks you want your turkeys to be and your weight and things like that. So we in March knew that there would be no access to labour other than what was in the UK. And it needed to be prepared for because long story short, turkey plucking and turkey processing is not everyone's cup of tea. Um, yeah. And you can never guarantee, I think most farmers are, you can never guarantee who's going to on the day and who's actually going to want to do it or be any good at it. So, um, you know, they prepared for the fact that they were going to have less staff, less labour to process, and they adjusted their numbers significantly to do that. So we are around 20% shorter on turkeys. Wow. I will say, though, that actually, because we are able to travel this year, the actual effect of that it shouldn't be too huge because if you think everybody was in the UK, nobody was allowed to leave the UK for Christmas last year. So the, the, the turkeys that were needed would have been a lot more last year than they perhaps would be this year. So I think yeah. pretty much everybody, if they want a turkey, they'll be able to get hold of one from somewhere uh, along the lines. Um, but yeah, so there's, there's a definite turkey shortage. Um, we then obviously had in October uh, the passports to allow people to come in and, and the seasonal workers to come into the country to be able to process. So this whole big Christmas is safe thing was a bit of a, I don't know, how do you, I don't know, how do you say the word, sort of a, a shade kind of, it, you can't put more turkeys on the ground if they weren't yeah. really. So those workers coming in will definitely help to make sure that what's here is processed, but it was never going to increase the numbers that yeah so all i would say to people is when you're looking for a turkey this year just turn it over and have a look and see where it's come from and if you can try and get hold of a british one to try and support our british farmers that have obviously had 
What a challenging year. Yeah. Well, and last year was wasn't exactly a barrel of laughs, was it? No, no. I remember Boris, the exact moment that Boris announced. So I, me and my team were preparing all the uh, the turkeys to be boxed up, and we we're all stood there, hands hands up, turkeys bottomed, effectively doing the uh, doing the necessary to be told that actually all plans have been cancelled, to then receive an absolute barrage of phone calls from people trying to change their turkey orders at the last minute, which, you know, <laughs> I can't decrease the size of your turkey. <laughs> no. But at least, you know, you can, I know there's kind of always ongoing jokes about, you know, how long they last and how long they hang around for, but you can cook it and freeze bits of it and all sorts, can't you, and have it at later dates. And I really like turkey actually as, as a meat anyway. I, I'm a much more of a white meat fan anyway. So yeah, I'm quite well, happy yeah. having people last year was um, what butcher the turkey. So I, I've, I've, I've learned to be able to um, crown a turkey and I've learned to be able to take the meat off the bone and do like a boneless rolled turkey. So uh-huh. all I do is just say to people, that's fine, not a problem. Do you want me to join it up for you? So you can have a bit now, you can put the rest in the freezer for later on. And and that, you know, that that's how we got round it really. So I know you sold up turkeys incredibly quickly. So there are no turkeys left from you, are they? No one can buy one. No. Well, not at this point, not until we've allocated everyone. There might be a few left. And if there are, we'll pop them up on the website and on socials. Awesome. So it was saying to people, if if they're looking for a turkey in a supermarket, obviously British is the dream. What other kind of top tips do you have to do with turkey selection? Um, I think it's just work out how many you need. Uh, Sorry, how many you're feeding. And then with things like um, sort of turkeys, we sort of allow for about 500 grams of meat per person. So, you know, if you're feeding six, you know, like a three to four kilo turkey would be perfect because that'll allow you for some extra um, meat for sandwiches and such like afterwards if you want. Um, make sure it fits in your oven if you're buying something absolutely massive. Yeah. If you're buying frozen, make sure you follow the defrosting instructions religiously and allow it to come up to room temperature before you cook it to make sure it's all safe. Yeah. And obviously with your leftovers if you can't do anything with them there and then just freeze them for later please don't waste any do you um rate like the turkey thermometer things that you stick in it and then it pops up when it's the right temperature like the probes um to be honest with you we don't really use them we tend to just time it and we'll then if it's not quite cooked when we we are timing say we just check it every 10 minutes minutes and we just use the the skewer and the juice is running clear for us um, right, so you but, the skewer in and then you kind of push on it and the liquid yeah and liquid, yeah so when that's running clear that's fine you're cooked and then we tend to take it out and rest it for a good hour if it's all wrapped up it's actually still cooking so you need to just be a bit mindful of that within your cooking times because it could then go over if you've take you know if you've overcooked it um, or you cooked it for too long in the oven. So you just be really mindful of that. Um, but yeah, it's, it's lovely. We live for, for sort of an hour to let the juices rest, just the meat to, it's a more tender, sort of, a, oh, I don't know, it's sort of just, it just gives it that breathing of it and it carves beautifully after it's had a rest as well. And I always thought, oh God, if you relax it for that, not relax it, if you rest it for that long, it'll go cold. Absolutely not. No, it will still be, it'll be perfect eating temperature. It will still be warm. Um, just make sure, just, you know, put foil over it and then pop a tea towel over the top just to help keep the heat in. Awesome. And I guess at this time of year, you don't really have much time for your other side of the business, which I know you have been absolutely flat out with, haven't you? <laughs> um, well, I, 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 my intention was to have sort of kind of shut down towards the beginning of, of December, so then just focus on the techies. But it, it just hasn't worked like that. It's it's really busy. We're trying every day I get out of bed and pinch myself that I'm so grateful for. But at the same time, obviously, it does make it challenging juggling the two. Yeah, because in addition to being a turkey farmer, Jade is also Mortimer Rose Wealth Management. And you're a financial advisor, aren't you? That's the correct I- title. I am, yeah, yeah. So I am. Um, I I've been in uh, financial advice, banking, mortgages since I left school at sixteen. 
I, I left school because I didn't want to do any more exams and things like that. And I went to work in the bank, which is the one thing I said I would never do. Uh, roll it forward and I completed all my qualifications and had a long, long career within banking um, and a number of different organisations, really. And it got to sort of 2018 and because I had three children, um, all under the age of five, trying to work full time for a large corporate organisation, it just, it just didn't work. And I was offered the opportunity to join St. James's Place, who sit behind their company, and um, I took it. And I was a bit like, I don't know how this is going to go. I know I love looking after people. I know I love giving financial advice to people. So we'll just see, see what happens and then roll it on four years, which will be next year. It's, it's been insane. <laughs> I, I take several new clients on every week. Um, I've done some really varied stuff for people that has made such a difference to their lives or their outlook on life or their finances or their plans. Um, so yeah, it's, I love it. It's challenging, especially at the moment. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, I, I, I'm a people person. You can probably tell for how easy I find to sit and chat, but I really enjoy sitting and chatting and having a cup of tea and just kind of getting to know people. And when when we think of financial advice, what kind of, of, of things specifically do you help with? So uh, because I'm really based, I actually do a bit of everything. So pensions is obviously a huge area I advise in and I work with lots of businesses to be able to help them extract money into their pensions or use pensions as a, as a tax effective way of um, you know, I say tax reducing option for them, all legal and above board, nothing, <laughs> nothing illegal or untoward, all within the rules. Um, and then obviously investments, I've got to sit alongside pensions and that's to help with savings. We have been in a long period of low interest rates now, but people are having yeah. to look for ways to be able to make more from them savings because, you know, at 0.01%, which most people are getting on their savings, that, you know, we're not, we're, we're so far below inflation at the moment, that money's losing money by being in the bank. Yeah. And then we do mortgages, which I have to say has been very challenging this year. So between stamp duty deadlines and holidays and mortgage lenders being really difficult for self-employed, which would probably be 95% of my clients that I work with, it, it's been a challenging year. What helps massively is the fact that I run my own business, both from perspective and, you know, Mortimer Rose, my own business. And it helps really when I'm, you know, trying to get a mortgage underwriter, so the person who makes the decision on mortgage, to understand exactly this person's structure, their income, what they do. Um, so it, I think it gives me that edge. But I won't lie and say it's been an easy thing getting people mortgages through this year. But I'm still on a 100% track record. I don't want to say that to you. I feel like I need to touch on wood with that. Nobody's walked in and not walked out with what they've needed in some way, shape or form. <laughs> it does help. I'm an absolute hound dog and I just won't give up. You know, we will find if, if If I can see a way, we will do it. We will find it. I love that. So before I let you go, can you tell us all the places where we can find you for both businesses? And if there's anything else you'd like to share with us, please do. Um, I don't think so. I think you're probably all fed up with me talking by now. But um, Kat, do follow us on social. So I am on Instagram. I'm at Out and About Poultry and same on Facebook. And then the, for the financial advice side of things, I'm at Mortimer Rose WM for both Facebook and Instagram as well. So do head over. Um, the turkey farm is out of it. You will mainly find me rocking in a cupboard, just drinking gin, but I can promise you a much more professional side to me. <laughs> for more summer recipes. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so, so much for joining us today, Jade. It's been brilliant. And I hope your fingers recover. When do they normally come back to normal? Um, I'll take a couple of days and then I will finish them off for the season with the actual processing of the turkeys because we dress all the birds cold 
Um, it does oh, take a bit of a toll, uh, but yeah, by the new year, they'll be absolutely fine and I'll have forgotten it all and I'll be ready to roll again. <laughs> oh God. Oh, it's like having children, isn't it? I mean, I've only, obviously I only had the twins, so I couldn't like then didn't make another decision, but they all say, oh, you know, you forget about like the pain and all the other stuff that goes with having kids. And that's why you have more children. It sounds like it's the same with turkey farming. Oh yeah, yeah, it totally is. And obviously I've had three kids, so um, I've clearly yeah. got the pain twice more afterwards. Um, yeah, I think I'm suffering for it more now. Less said about that, the better. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us today, Jay. That has been brilliant and um, we'll catch up really, really soon. Yeah, nice to see you. Thanks, Gary. Bye.